And U.S. Sprinter star Sha'Carri Richardson failed to qualify for the 200-meter final Sunday at the USA Track and Field Outdoor Championships. After the race, Richardson had a message for the media. Us, take a listen. I'm coming to speak not on just my behalf, but all athletes' behalf, that when you guys do interviews, y'all should respect athletes more. Y'all should understand them coming from whether they're winning, whether they're losing, whatever the case may be. Athletes deserve way more respect than when y'all just come and throw cameras into their faces. Understand how an athlete operates and then ask your questions. Then be more understanding of the fact that they are still human, no matter just the fact of y'all just trying to get something to put out in an article to make a dollar. Thank you. Ooh, Acho. We're stuck right here because we're media. We're also athletes. So what's your reaction to Shakari Richardson asking for respect from us? Um, I got a couple thoughts. First, I will answer that. Uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with the message, but I do take issue with the messenger. Oh. Uh, I think the message, we've heard the message from so many people. We've heard the message from Naomi Osaka. We've heard the message from Cam Newton. We've heard the message mm. time and time again from several different athletes. Mm. Um, my issue, though, at this junction with the messenger goes back to the simple saying of you can't call for attention and hang up. There it is. Body I vividly, it. vividly, vividly recall being at a track meet, not just watching it, being at a track meet in 2021, just a year ago when Shakari runs a 10.75, which is an outstanding time for a woman, a top 10 time in the history of the sport, mm -hmm. runs directly to the camera. Come get me, mm -hmm. she said. So if after your successful runs, mm. you are going to run to the camera, then you cannot be mad when after your unsuccessful runs, the camera runs to you. Mm. So mm. I don't necessarily take issue with the message because there is some ration and reason to the message. I think media members, journalists, do need to be a little bit more cognizant of how to deliver their questions. Now, okay. Marcellus Wiley has illuminated my mind, and I appreciate you for it. There is an economy of sport. And the economy of sport is, hey, athlete, you perform, hey, media, you get the athlete to speak, hey, fan, you engage with the athlete because they've spoken, hey, athlete, you perform, hey, media member, you get the athlete to speak, hey, fan, <laughs> you engage with the athlete because mm -hmm. they have spoken. There is an economy of sport where athletes, you must speak positively or negatively after a performance because the fan wants to engage with you. Yes. Shakari has done more for fan engagement in track and field than any track and field athlete since Usain Bolt. Okay, I'll give you that. But the reason she has done so much for fan engagement is because she engages with the fans. Mm. You can't only engage when it's positive. No athlete has that luxury. Cam Newton faced the most criticism of his career for two reasons. We recall when he danced in the end zone. We recall of three reasons. When he danced in the end zone, we recall when he laughed at the female reporter saying it's just funny hearing a woman ask about routes. And then we also recall after losing the Super Bowl when he was slumped over in his chair, sad, facing them questions, mm. not giving much thought or energy or answers to the questions. Those were the three reasons. Yeah. So, Shakari, if you are going to be a star, you are not immune from going through what stars have to go through. Preach, preach, preach. Um, <sighs> ooh, my reaction, my reaction is that she has forgotten what she has gotten herself into, which is sports. Let's talk about sports. Before you even talk about individual talent and accomplishments, uh, you talk about just going to any track meet. The goal is to win. You've educated me on this, because my goal is to PR. And you said, uh, PR and get sixth place ain't going to feel good, right? <laughs> You're right, because MJ had four touchdowns yesterday, and we lost again. And it's like, so <laughs> my boy be going off, which is hard to get touchdowns when you lose losing, because that means your team ain't that good. I digress. Here's the thing. Uh, it is a results-based business. Yes, sir. And the love language of the media, of us all, are the results. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we will listen to those, and those will echo louder than anything you will say. Because what we're echoing and what we're hearing are just facts. And it's amazing that Shakiri finds herself now in this position that she thinks that she wants to talk on behalf of all athletes. Well, let me just respectfully decline and say, not on my behalf. I understood this from a young age all the way throughout my entire playing career, which is this. If you win, it's just going to feel better. It's just going to look better. It's just going to be better. If you lose, quiet time and make it better. What do they say in winning? Say it's us. And in losing, say it's me. 
she has that flipped. She has one fingernail on the podium trying to climb up, and as soon as she carries, looks like she's going to be on that podium, all of a sudden, you hear all these words, all of these statements. But then, Shakira, you can't now cry for, for help and need an umbrella from all of the raining of criticism coming your way because now you are in a losing situation. Just two weeks ago, Shakira won. Me and you were privately texting about it. I was pumped. I was like, go ahead. Because if you're going to talk that much, I want you to walk that much. And she's not doing it at the same level. She's taking a step forward and two steps back. For every 100 she runs, it really feels like a 200, because she's going one, back, one, back. And I don't understand why she keeps putting this cart before the horse. Why does she want to be, why does she want to be a spokeswoman before she wants to be an Olympic champion? That's what needs to come first. And then the volume of not only what she's saying, but the message in there will be louder than anything she could do in these losing moments. Here, Cell, is the question I have for everyone to ponder. Mm. Why is there an inverse correlation between success on the court, field, track, and your success off of it in social media? Since Sha'Carri Richardson mm. was in that Nike and Beats by Drake commercial, she has not had major success off of the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since that commercial finished last, ninth place at a huge meet pre-Fontaine in Oregon. Yeah. Since that commercial goes and finishes 23rd out of 31 runners in America, not the world, in America, and finishes, I believe, 10th out of 24 runners in the 200 in America, not the world in America. 23rd in the 100 out of 31 and 10th out of 24. Mm. Naomi Osaka, since she was on the cover of Time Magazine oh. and since she had that Netflix documentary, from what I see, withdraw from the French Open in 21. You lose in the round of 16 at the Olympics. You lose in the round of 32 at the U.S. Open. You lose in the round of 32 at the Australian Open. You lose in the round, the first round of 128 at the French Open, and you withdraw from Wimbledon, if my statistics are correct. Now, Amy Osaka was the number one tennis player in the world. World. But since she was featured cover of time and featured with the Netflix doc, you see the lack of success. Mm -hmm. Simone Biles is the greatest gymnast ever. But since we saw the commercial featuring the GOATs in the commercial, literal goats, you know, the parallel between greatest of all time, mm. all of a sudden for Simone Biles, she falls short for Simone Biles. We're talking about the greatest ever. There appears to be an inverse correlation between your success on the field and your praise off of the field. When you think about athletes like Giannis Antetokounmpo, you missed it last week, Sel. Where? I ran into Giannis at his movie premiere. I did see I that. I finally oh, saw so my so. guy. He looked at me and he said this. Hey, you the guy to be talking mess, huh? He says, honestly, I don't really watch. I'm not on social media, but people send it to me. Uh -huh. Then I end up telling him I talk mess about everybody else but you. <laughs> All that to say, Giannis didn't even realize I'm his biggest fan because mm. he's not on social media. Mm. I oh. saw one world record fall at U.S. championships yesterday. I was there. I spent the weekend in Eugene, Oregon, because I'm a true track fan. I saw one world record fall. Mm. It was in the 400-meter hurdles by a woman named Sydney McLaughlin, I believe a 22-year-old black woman named Sydney McLaughlin. The reason I state her age and her, her, uh, her uh, uh, color, her race, is because Simone Biles, Sha'Carri Richardson, mm. Naomi Osaka, I'm they listening. all fall into this same demographic. 24 and below, black woman. I saw one world record fall, Sydney McLaughlin. Sydney McLaughlin, don't be on social media. A little bit, but not, not but like not that. But not okay, at all. I hear you. Sydney ran a I world follow. record follow. and didn't even post about it. Mm. So Her when bad. I think of it, I agree. Her bad. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. I'm listening. Runs a world record and doesn't post about it. Mm. Her bad. I agree. Mm -hmm. But then I would say, is it her bad? Because based upon the inverse correlation between praise and publicity and success, maybe Sydney's the one that has it figured out. Yeah. Because what it appears based upon my limited sample size yeah. of the Sydney McLaughlin's, the Giannis Antetokounmpo's, it is hard to maintain being the best in the world yeah. while simultaneously being the best at branding. Yeah. It appears you have to pick one. It appears based on track success, Sha'Carri has made the wrong choice. Now, based off off the track success, Sha'Carri's made the right choice. Yeah. But based off track success, she's made the wrong one. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Um, great examples because you can't, argue those examples, but you can't argue a greater perspective than just those examples. And here what I would argue, that LeBron James is mastered where you don't have to pick one. But he does. 
But he goes know, dark. But he goes dark. Yeah, you could pick time. Look, I go on vacation. I actually go on social media more on vacation because <laughs> I got free time. Other than that, I'm chasing kids around here daily. So no f free time. But you could pick and choose your times of when you're really getting involved with social media. But LeBron James, like in terms of his branding, no, he's not lost a single brand sponsorship because of what he says on social media, or has he fallen off on the court because of his engagement? But that's the word, engagement. Why do these cats, all of a sudden, it seems like they're going down, but they're still going up in the real world in terms of sponsorship? Engagement. Companies are like, yo, people are talking about you. They're not saying good things all about <laughs> you, but they're talking about you. Right now, if I wanted to be more popular on social media, I think I know the formula. Just be crazy. Be wilder. Do more. Be more daring. Let it all out. No inhibition. But at the same time, like, I'm not here for that. I represent more than just, oh, y'all caught me on a viral video. Here's my inch issue with this to sum up what you said for me. These athletes are louder in losing moments, and you just mentioned it. You mentioned all of the examples, and let's add Kaepernick to it as well, because when he was kissing biceps, the hat was backward, different team, and he was in the Super Bowl. We didn't hear nothing about all the issues that were still going on at that time. They get into these losing moments, and then they get louder. And to me, and I've always called it like this, that is protection. Because you got to remember, I found myself in losing moments, and I wanted to find an out without looking at myself on the end. So I kept looking around like, damn, I could blame, we lost our tackle. No, I could blame that we don't have Junior Seau. We don't have all these players. We don't, no, I could blame that they ain't got enough on off. I, who hasn't been a guy or gal in a moment where it's going down and you didn't want to find the mattress? But you don't look for the mattress in these moments. You're supposed to look for the mirror and fix what your issue is. And with Shakiri, she just didn't know what she was getting herself into. Mm, she, point. she was the fastest woman ever under the age of 20. She had the collegiate record at 1075. She thought that she had it all figured out. And then she made that graduation to the pro level. And then every woman you're racing, that's all they do. Every single day, every single way. So now, hey girl and fresh outfits ain't gonna get you on that podium. But you think it's gonna protect you when things go bad. And I understand why she's doing it, but I am not absolving her of the wrong when she does it. Can we get the sound one more time? Can we get uh -oh. the sound, Let's the Shakiri sound one more time? Uh, Y'all let me know if we can, otherwise I will... Here we go. Oh, let's hear. I'm coming to speak not on just my behalf, but all athletes' behalf. That when you guys do interviews, y'all should respect athletes more. Y'all should understand them coming from whether they're winning, whether they're losing, whatever the case may be. Athletes deserve way more respect than when y'all just come and throw cameras into their faces. Understand how an athlete operates and then ask your questions. Then be more understanding of the fact that they are still human, no matter just the fact of y'all just trying to get something to put out in an article to make a dollar. Thank you. See, I think the other the other disconnect here is remember Draymond Green? Mm. Just was that? three weeks ago. Okay. Draymond, after uh -huh. his losses, he going to the podium like, yo. I'm here. I got to be here after my losses. If, I, if I'm going to be here after my wins, I'm going to be here after my losses. What did Draymond say when they were getting beat by 55 points against the Memphis Grizzlies? <laughs> he dancing yeah. Yeah. in Memphis with them while they playing whoop that trick. <laughs> because Draymond is like, if I'm going to sit here and dance when mm. I'm winning, mm. I'm going to sit here and dance when I'm losing. Yeah. Because say what you will about Draymond, and Draymond be a loose cannon at times too, but he understands the economy of the sport. Okay. And he understands the economy of the sport is very simple. I cannot get all the praise when I win and try to be omitted of the blame when I lose. There it is. And Draymond, of all the things he may not have figured out, he has figured this out more than anybody else, which is, yo, when I win, I got to stand and take it. And when I lose, I got to stand and take it. And I believe to your point, yep. I think Shakari is just going to continue to have to understand you cannot get the glory and not be willing to take the blame. Mm -hmm. Both of those come with the sport. Whether you like it or you hate it, they both are necessary for the sport. Say it, say it, say it. And for your, your emotional state, for your mental health, for, your, for the joy of what you're doing right now. It doesn't sound real joyful and joy, joyous when you see someone, every time they lose, they go to this same move. This is her, this is her move now. When she suffers, she's going to tell everyone to be nicer to her. What I decode from that is basically be nice to me when I lose because I'm still going through stuff. 
Well, you're in the wrong business because if you're not at the top of that podium, we got questions for you, and they're not going to be flattering from the silver medalist on down. That's just the way it goes. So to help her is something that I use in my life. I add up those with me, not against me. And trust me, I'm always going to have a number count of those with me, and I'm always going to have a number count of those with me, against me. But I don't add them up. And what's happening with Shakira is she letting them start to dictate terms to her and how she should feel. They're not going to be nice to you, Shakira, when you lose. Beyonce says something. Her new, new album out. It's banging. not out yet. It ain't out? She got a single. She oh, got a single. Okay. That single, banging. And you know what she said is interesting? And this is kind of like old athlete, new athlete, old media, new media. Beyonce said that artists, they don't make albums anymore. They just want to hit. They just want a single, and they just want to go tour and get that money and then come back and then figure out something else. And I'm starting to see that with these athletes as well. They just want to spaz. They just want to say something in one moment. They don't want to put a body of work together. You don't want to make the Olympics, actually win a medal, and then come back and say, talk to me. Instead, you want to talk your way up to that podium. It's not going to happen. Because in sports, you know this pro sports. Whew, to get those same winning results, you're going to have to redefine and do it differently.